Today on Pre-Field Training, we are going to take a look at a SWAT duty belt setup. I know I called this SWAT duty belt setup, but we're also going to be talking a little bit about the other kit that my buddy carries when he's on SWAT, his old belt and his new belt, and some of the unique perspectives that he comes from doing this in the real world instead of just on Instagram. I think you're going to learn some stuff you haven't heard other places, so stick around for all of that. And if you have any comments or questions about the terrible choices that he makes in life or from being on a SWAT team and not getting any sleep or with the gear that you're looking at here, make sure you put those down in the comments down below. If you want to see more SWAT equipment setups, we've got some other stuff coming up in the future. I've got a bunch of uh, ear pro comparisons coming up, some knife comparisons, things like that. So make sure you subscribe to Free Field Training over on YouTube. That's where you normally get this content first. So to start with, we're gonna look at his old SWAT duty belt setup. I'm gonna put my coffee down here real quick. This is the setup he was using before, and he said he was uh, unhappy with some things about we were having a conversation, so we tried to set him up with a bunch of stuff that I had in stock or could get from manufacturers that I work with, or we could find on the internet that we thought was gonna work a little better for him. I kind of gave him open access to the stuff that I have in my garage and, and all of my contacts in the police and law enforcement and military industry. So the old setup is from Eagle Industries. I'm not saying this is a bad setup and neither is he. It's just kind of outlived its usefulness and it's, it's a little obsolete at this point. So the belt here is from Eagle Industries. So are these pouches. This is his med pouch on the back and he actually has a, a Blackhawk Omnivore holster mounted on here. He's got his uh, Streamlight Suretac and what looks like a single pistol mount up there. The most interesting things about this old belt setup is the med pouch and the holster. Now he uses this holster because he likes uh, the speed of the omnivore and he also has this tendency to change out pistols quite frequently. Right now we've got a FN509 with a TLR1 and a Trigicon optic on top of it. And previously he had had a SIG P320 and before that I think it was a Glock or something else. And since he's kind of set himself on the TLR1s, he can mount a TLR1 on whatever pistol he has and be able to switch pistols between holsters without having to buy new holsters. I think these holsters are only like 60 bucks. Now this is not what I'm saying I would use, but it is what he uses and he really likes the Blackhawk Omnivore. The pouch up here, this is his med pouch. And his old system for having his med pouch set up is this large Eagle Industries pouch. And then he's got inside of here, bagged up in a Ziploc bag with the zipper facing down and then duct tape around it to make a little grab handle to make it easier to get out. Because obviously this would be behind his back when he's out working. A little grab handle and then you'd have to rip this open to get to the medical equipment inside. While not ideal, and he admits it's not ideal as well, uh, this was the solution, the low budget solution for having all of his medical gear all tight and close where he could get to it from behind his back. You notice his tourniquet is still inside of this bag, which would necessitate opening up the bag, getting this out, ripping it open and getting to the tourniquet, which he mentioned to me was not ideal, right? And he knew that going into this, but this was the best setup that he had at the time. Around this area, most guys have to buy almost all of their own equipment, which is kind of a problem for, for everybody involved with it. He's got some stuff that's in here just kind of uh, rapidly available and is obviously just an extra area to keep extra stuff he thought he might need at some point. Why that uh, paracord is down there, I have no idea. There's probably a good reason for it being bright-ass yellow. If you can think of a good reason for the paracord being bright-ass yellow, you let me know down in the comments down below. But as you can see, now that you know what's inside there, this little grab handle kind of makes sense. If you needed to get to this, you can grab any of the three handles and just start yanking on stuff until something comes out. The Streamlight SureTac, he said he was using uh, because it was pretty bright, although this is an older technology, it's a fairly bright, good throwing light. You can see it's got just a smooth reflector on there. It's a good throwing light, although he's moved from this, since he has to wear a helmet anyway, to a helmet mounted light when he has little utility tests. So he's actually gotten rid of having a belt mounted flashlight. Leave your uh, angry comments about that down below. He had a single rifle mag pouch on here, dual pistol mag pouches. One of the things that he was complaining about with the Eagle Industry stuff was that although at the time it seemed like the best setup for him, a lot of these things are floppy and so it made putting 
uh, mags back into them more difficult than they had to be. And also the belt was really floppy. You can see all the things that he had to do on here with Ranger bands and zip ties and stuff to keep this all together with heavy use. The buckle is only a, a two push buckle in order to open it. Most now have a, a triple retention or a subdued retention inside where you have to dig in and actually push and hold things in order to get buckles open. We'll look at that in the solutions that we created for this. And the whole belt itself is kind of floppy. You just, it, the whole thing crushes. The great thing about these types of belts is that the padding makes it more comfortable on your hips, especially if childbirthing hips like, like I do or like he does. But the one problem with it is that if it's not tight enough, uh, things are not in the same position as they were when you left them. So you put your mags on your belt and you go to reach down for them and they're slightly off from where they were. And when, when tenths of seconds count, you, you don't want to be searching for things on your belt. So that's kind of his old belt setup. So we're going to slide this up and look a little bit closer at his new belt setup. Uh, the primary solution for this was let's deal with the platform of the belt and the squishiness and floppiness. So I've worked with Safe Life Defense for quite a while. Most people know that. I was one of the, the original people on the internet that gave them time of day. And one of, I think, their, their finest products that they make is their belts. The belts are all made in the USA in their manufacturing facility in Vegas. I've sat there and talked with the people and watched these belts be made last year when I stopped out there for SHOT Show. These belts are great. We've actually picked up a car with one of these belts. They don't crush. They're very, very, it's a very stiff material. You can see it doesn't really sag in the middle the way uh, another belt would. They're all triple to quadruple thickness. If you want to count the micro molly in here as part of the thickness of it, you can actually wrap this around in a circle with nothing on it and stand on the edges of these and have them not crushed down. They're a really cool belt. They come with hook side Velcro on the back, and then there's an inner belt that has loop side Velcro. So you put this onto your pants, and then you put your duty belt around it, and theoretically, you don't need belt keepers. He doesn't run belt keepers with the setup, says it works fine. I would run belt keepers with it anyway, because that's just the type of person I am. I don't want my belt falling down around my ankles. The downsides to this belt are twofold. Uh, one is, although the Cobra buckles are great, these are real Cobra buckles, you can, like I said, we lifted a car with these, didn't have any damage to the buckles at all. The nylon webbing held, it's, it's gonna be more than durable enough uh, for purpose. One of the downsides of these is that all the hardware is black, you can't get color-coded hardware, at least not yet. And also they put their logo on here in black, red, and white, even though Everything else on the belt is tan. The first thing I would do if this was mine, and they'll probably be angry at me for saying this because then they don't get the residual marketing of having it on their belt, is I would just cut this little patch off and, and leave it slick. You can also see on the other side the little elastic loop that they use to retain the end of the belt is also black. I would prefer that that be color matched to the belt itself. These belts come in two varieties. The one we have here is the variety with micro molly, which allows you to molly attach things to the belt. You can see right there. Now, these come in a bunch of colors, but the micro molly ones are the ones that I prefer if your policy allows it. And again, looking at the back of the belt, here is why. It leaves all of this Velcro area open. If you molly attach things to the belt, you don't cover the Velcro up, and then it sticks more securely to that inner belt. Looking from the back here, you can see where we have clips that go around the belt, you lose that Velcro area. Now we can attach a Velcro dot on here. I did a video several years ago before that became a common thing about attaching a glue on Velcro to these in order to attach it to your inner belt. And while that's a solution, if that's the only solution you have, let's say you have to have a leather belt and you can put Velcro dots on it and be able to hold everything together, that becomes a maintenance item over the course of the life of the belt because the glue will eventually come loose and it ends up starting coming off and you either have to super glue it down or take it off, clean it off, and put more Velcro on there. Looking at the pouches on here and how it's changed, we're gonna look at the medical first because I think that's the, the biggest step forward here. Uh, Allegiance Holster Company, which you, you've seen on the channel before, I contacted them about slickening up his med pouch. They have a bunch of different solutions and this is the ones that they recommended and some things that he put together with it that you know make sense to him but i've never really understood the one thing i've never really understood is putting scissors 
on the outside of a med pouch, like this is the super emergency, like, like I'm gonna have to cut a penny. And like, oh, hold on, bro, cut this penny real quick so we can get the team in. I've never really understood that, but uh, he likes it, so he sticks them on the outside. He says it's great for opening chips. Inside this pouch, and you can see it's pretty easy to open. There's a big flap on the outside, so you're not picking at the Velcro with your fingernail in the cold. And even with gloves, you can grab a hold of this little tab and be able to get the pouch open. Inside is their individual first aid kit. It uh, doesn't have a tourniquet inside of it. They recommend you attach a tourniquet either with, this is their hard tourniquet pouch, or they have an elastic loop system that goes on the bottom of this where you can attach a tourniquet to the bottom. He didn't like that for whatever reason, but that's really the way I would go. So all my med was in one spot and I had at least my first tourniquet where I knew it was gonna be and immediately available. Inside here is everything else that they have in their kit. And of course it's labeled with their brand on it. It's sealed up and then pre-scored. So if you need the stuff that's in here, it's gonna stay sealed up. It's not gonna get wet, but if you need it, you can just grab and rip pretty easily because it's pre the edges are pre-scored. That's a smart thing to do with any of your medical equipment if you're gonna be carrying it a lot and using it very little. Uh, inside of this is one mini responder emergency trauma dressing, a quick clot, a hyphen compact uh, chest seal, surgical tape, and uh, bear claw nitrile gloves extra large. If it was me, one thing that I would do with this is I would put my gloves on the outside of this and slide it in. So when I pull them out, the gloves are already in my hands. That's just me. I like to not get people's gunk all over myself if I can avoid it. Moving over here closer to the strong side of the belt, we have Allegiance Holsters tourniquet pouch. This is a hard Kydex pouch. Of course, all of these are mounted with their little dots, attachment points in the back. Basically, it's spring-loaded. You push up and it pops the pouch off really easily. It's a pretty cool system. Their hard case, uh, for this purpose, I've got a couple problems with it. Uh, it does a great job of protecting the tourniquet so you don't get a lot of UV light on it. Light exposure and weather exposure has been uh, shown in many studies to be a failure point of tourniquets. The one thing I really don't like about this pouch though is that the other side is not color coded. So it's black on one side and they only change to the flat dark earth on the outside of the pouch. It is both, they're all both marked as medical. This one is a Velcro span that you can put your own patch on or get a patch from them. This one is kind of integrated in. You can't change this out to like a Red Cross unless you're really good with a magic marker. Uh, moving to the strong side from that, we have a Spyderco knife. I'm not sure what the model of this is, but it is a pretty cool knife and Spyderco does tend to make good knives. This one is uh, made in Taiwan and it's got a nice Kydex sheath there. I've never understood the big ridiculous knife thing that most guys that are on SWAT seem to be really into. Of course, it's got a little little flare on there because why even a tactical cool guy if you're not going to look cool doing it and have a little flare on your stuff? I've never really understood the big tactical knife thing, but a lot of guys think it's important. I always just carry a folder and normally not a ridiculously large folder, but you know, for reference, this is his EDC knife that he just pulled out of his pocket. You can see it's pretty messed up. So that's the type of person he is. He's, he's into the big ridiculous knives. Moving to the front, he's stuck with the Blackhawk Omnivore as his holster for SWAT. Again, not color-coded, not the type of thing I would want in a gun grab. It wouldn't be my recommendation personally, but he really likes it. He says this is fast and it's versatile with the stuff that he wants to do. Enough that he owns at least two of these. I think he's got three or four sitting around down here right now. From there in the front, he likes to keep at least the very front of his belt kind of clear. It helps with bending down and not snagging all of your armor on it. Speaking of his armor, he likes to keep a slick carrier, which is why the belt is pretty heavily set up here. His carrier, he keeps, he has a 511 uh, Tech Tech plate carrier. I think I'm saying that right. And he's got his patches on the front that he's required to carry for work, which we're not gonna show on here, obviously, because they're department issued stuff. And he's got uh, mostly just mags on it. I think that's a, that's a pretty smart setup in case you have to ditch armor for whatever reason, uh, or if it's really hot out in your training, you can still do the majority of your training without having your armor on so you don't dehydrate and die. And not dehydrating and dying is always a good thing. Moving forward, there you can see that's their Cobra, that's Safe Life's Cobra buckle on their belts. You can see the little Made in USA tag, and then you can see the Velcro starts immediately after the adjustment area. Moving to the other side 
of the med pouch in the back, we've got a Maxpedition, uh, I think it's called a Roly Poly dump pouch. This is probably the small version. I've never seen any purpose for the larger version, at least not in law enforcement. I hear guys, when you see these on people's duty belts, guys that were in the military, are like, what are you going to use that for? Well, I'll tell you, uh, it's, this is not actually for use on the street most of the time. It's just for training. These are great. Pull them up. You got a dump pouch here. It's like a massive, massive cargo pocket. Only this is probably the only cargo pocket you have that don't have knee pads and crap all over them. Or you don't have a, a drop down harness for your gas mask, which I'm sorry we don't have here right now. Like uh, getting in the way of being able to use the cargo pocket. You put it on the back of your belt and then you need to change you need to change out mags. Let's say we're doing tack loads for the day, or you don't just want you just don't want to have to separate your mags from everybody else's pretty much identical mags at the end of the day, especially those rifle mags. You can throw them into your dump pouch, pick them up as you go, or as you're changing them out, throw them into the dump pouch and then you can have them all on you and then you're not separating them. Another great use for this that I found is to be able to keep a water bottle on you in training or anything when you're out working that you don't have a pouch for, you don't have pockets for. It, it ends up being most of the time a impromptu water bottle pouch. Over here we've got a Safari Land belt clip. I'm trying to get a good shot of this for you guys. It's just a polymer clip. It's designed to keep your Ear Pro. This is Safari Land's Liberator Ear Pro. It's actually mine. So designed to be able to flex enough where you could put the top of Ear Pro through it and clip it onto your belt, mostly for training. He keeps his gloves on here so that way he's not losing his gloves. If you've ever been a cop, you know losing your gloves is kind of a pain and you always need to have your gloves on you and keeping them in a cargo pocket works great as long as you religiously remember to take them out of your bag and put them on your cargo pocket. Since this is a part-time SWAT team that he's working for and he has to be able to keep his stuff all in a big box and be able to move to the trunk of his car, get on scene, put it all on, not lose anything, keeping the gloves on his belt makes sense, then he's not losing them in the back of the car anywhere. Puts the belt on, he knows he's got all his stuff. When he goes to get his gloves, they're right there. Same reason we have all the other pouches. Next up, we've got a Blade Tech mag pouch. This is his fastest mag, the one that he trains from the most, with a 30 round, what looks like a Gen 2 P mag, if I'm not mistaken, non-windowed. We'll flip it around so we don't confuse him when he goes to train from it. This would be the fastest mag, the one that he's going to go to automatically, realistically in law enforcement, although by policy we're required to carry more rifle mags and handgun mags. With a rifle, I mean, if you get through more than 60 rounds, you've probably gotten into something where you're going to make it into, into history books and they're going to have a, a special on PBS about the event and you're going to have like several YouTube videos breaking down what went wrong at the, at the collateral SWAT team shooting where 150 rounds were shot. Up here we've got... Two pistol mags, I think these are, what's our capacity here, people are going to want to know. 15 rounds for the FN 509 in 9mm, I'm pretty sure this is his training ammo in here. All ready for the next training day. Moving on from there, we've got Allegiance Holsters Company's single pistol mag pouches. He likes the single mag pouches because it allows you to move stuff around. If you want to change out where you've got your pistol mag pouch, it also allows you to space them easier to be able to get to the tops of the mag without them bumping into each other. If you've seen my other duty belt videos where I've got mag pouches that hold mags, something like this, where they're rounds out, they're very space efficient, but they're not very efficient for being able to grab those mags. It takes a little more training to get used to them. These are flared at the top, so between the taper of the mag and the flare of the mag of the magazine's pouch as well, it makes it very easy to get those mags back into the pouch and the spacing makes it very easy to get them out. These are adjustable, so there isn't a separate one. Again, like he does with the omnivore holster, he likes having pouches that allow you to change between different types of pistols. You're going to see that on his plate carrier. He's got HSI tacos on there so that no matter what he's running, the same magazine pouches will work for most things. These have a little adjustment on the side. I think you use a hex screw in there and it changes the depth of this for the, the long end of the mag. So if you're going to run, you know, one day you want to put Glock mags in here, you're going to change out and use a different pistol. Let's say your other pistol goes down or policies change or whatever other crazy reason you might want to change out mags, you can change what the depth of this is and make sure that these retain just as tight as you want to. That's kind of a problem with elastic based systems like the HSGI uh, tacos is that with the elastic, you're never going to get them exactly right. When you're using a set screw, you can set it exactly to the pressure that you want. 
So when you pull the mag out, you're gonna get the same feeling each time. The downside of this type of system is obviously we're gonna be out in the rain, and just like we seal up our medical equipment, if you've got something like this that isn't sealed up like this, you got obviously the ability for things to corrode. So if you do something like this, normally set it the way you want to, and you're either going to cover or seal this in some way, or you're gonna put a little Loctite on there, which kind of defeats the purpose of that system. But if you're the type of person that's going to switch things out and you want that perfect feel every time, that's one option to go with. On the back, of course, you can see it's got those dot pulls where, here we'll open it up, opens up, slides on and off the molly, slide it back in and pop it in place. Real easy system to put mo pouches onto molly. Look at the rest of this stuff. We've got an ops core helmet. And on here, ordinarily, he's got it over here on charge somewhere. He's got a light that he mounted on here. He started using a headlamp instead of a handheld light for SWAT. Having a handheld light, he says, isn't as advantageous. He'd rather, because he's carrying a rifle already, not have a rifle in one hand or have to sling the rifle to use the light to look around. He says for secondary and third searches or for doing a little utility task, especially when you're at the car trying to find another thing that you forgot in the trunk. It's easier just to turn the headlamp on than it is to go search for your handheld light and then use one hand to search and the other hand with your handheld light. We've got a mount on the front for NVGs, which we don't have here. They're locked away because those things are ridiculously expensive. We're not going to tell them about how expensive the NVGs are, don't worry. Uh, we've got EarPro already attached to the helmet. This is Walker's Razor EarPro. Uh, his old EarPro are up here. Maybe we'll look at those here in a second. And he's got a Team Wendy harness in here. Obviously, armor is something he takes pretty seriously. We've got our ID on the back. Not entirely sure why, if you're dressed like this and you've got a plate carrier on that says police front and back, you need a police ID on your helmet. Maybe if you're going to use this as a home defense setup, on your days off, maybe that's what he's doing. I don't know, he's got like a tomahawk and his helmet with his NVGs and a flashbang or something at home. I don't know, that seems, does seem like something he would do. And oddly enough, he's decided to mount a tourniquet on his helmet. I guess, you know, you never really can't have too many of them and they don't weigh a lot. It's an odd choice to me, but whatever. Here is his old Ear Pro. So these are some MSA Swordens. They're a little heavier then more modern ear pro that does similar things like these uh, Safari Land Liberators. They're heavier, uh, but they can also link in comms. These can be modified to link in comms. This comes factory like this to link your comms in. So you can plug your radio directly into this and then your boss can be echoing in your head anywhere you're at. It's, it's really an exciting experience. If you've ever experienced it, I'm sure you understand. Uh, there's a knob on these that adjusts your volume and then you've got mics up front. So what these do, in case you're not familiar, is they lock out any loud noises. So flashbangs going off, I mean, to a certain extent, you're always gonna get a little startled by a flashbang, even if you've got ear pro on them, and it still is gonna hit you. There's the concussive effect in the light also on top of the, the noise that they create. But uh, if you've ever fired a rifle inside of a building, like inside a shoot house, you know how incredibly loud that can be. Electronic Ear Pro is, is really a must in the environment that he's working in on SWAT. Uh, finally, we've got the rifle back here. Uh, that's not actually his duty rifle. He just thought it was really, really cool and wanted to put it in the background. So uh, you can all speculate about what type of rifle this is and, and the optics and stuff that are on it. He does have a law tactical folder on it and I'm, I'm sorry to tell everybody that it's that's not an airsoft gun, not, none of this stuff is. So if you came for this uh, looking for setups for your airsoft and you're upset that it's not airsoft, like when I did the SWAT plate carrier setup, you get a little link up there for that. I'm sorry, but uh, you know that's not what we do here. We're looking at the actual gear people are using. And some of it makes sense, some of it doesn't make sense. Uh, my buddy is one of those people that uses the little DG switches on his duty pistol. He thinks those are great, the little like finger switches that I think are dumb because they're going to create NDs. He's totally into that stuff. We've got very different ideas of what's cool and how to set things up, as you can see, but some things that kind of come through where we agree on. Like, you know, you got to look cool when you're at work, otherwise, what's the point? And being able to take what you have and make something that's going to work for the purpose if you don't have the money to sink in right up front on the very best and, and greatest of equipment. Uh, this is a great example. This is one of these things that you see in the real world and then you don't see 
You know, it never makes TV or Instagram because this doesn't sell you a, a product. So there's links and coupon codes for a lot of this stuff because it's companies that I've done videos for before and have sent me this stuff for other projects. I know the Safe Life Defense Belt, there's a link and a coupon code for that. I'm sure Allegiance Holsters, there probably is. Uh, Max Expedition, there's probably an Amazon link or something down below. I don't remember... I think this is something that he already had, the knife. So if I can find the name of the knife, I will put that down there. If I find a link for it, I will. But with with Spyderco, I mean, this might have already been out of production. The Omnivore holster, I know, is still out there. If I can figure out what Trigicon optic that is, I'll, I'll take some pictures and put some inlays for it. And we'll see if we can find a link for that for you guys. Uh, the Blade Tech mag pouch may, may very well be out of production. Uh, these I know are still in production because I think those are brand new. And if I figure out what 511 gloves these are specifically, let me take a look here. We'll throw that down there. Here's a model number and then a six digit or something. We'll, we'll figure that out. And this little clip may be out of production too, but I'm sure somebody makes something similar. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you check out Free Field Training on YouTube and Instagram where you can see a lot of this stuff as we shoot it live and also see the comments and questions and all of that and get notifications when I put on new cool stuff about new cool gear. Until next week, guys be safe and take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. And while you're here, why don't you check out some of these other goofy videos that I've made. Or you could subscribe or maybe go over to Patreon and see how you can get your name put on the videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are of course down in the description. We'll see you guys next time.